Welcome to the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report, presented by Yamaha. <laughs> Welcome back to the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report, the best fishing show in all the land. And even though he really needs no introduction, this is Captain Rick Murphy, and I'm Brie Gabrielle. And filling in for day of today is Captain Harry over at the workbench. Long time no see, Harry. Good to have you. It's great to be back here again. We got some really good stuff uh, for new product and some great tips and, on tackle and stuff like that for catching your uh, pompanos and snook and all kinds of stuff off the piers and jetty. Great. Well, we missed your smiling face. Oh, boy. That's scary. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. I know I'm excited about this show today because for those of us, Rick, who maybe don't have a boat or even right. a kayak, Right. <laughs> we need to be able to fish from land. Something like a pier jetty, isn't that right? You're absolutely right, Bree. And you know, when we look at the saltwater sportsman pictures from this week, it is certainly piers are where a lot of people go to fish. Mm -hmm. And the great thing about the piers this time of year, as we get into the fall, we have a fall mullet migration. And as those mullet migrate down the beach, it's a great time to fish off of the piers and the jetties. And you know, when I saw this picture of this cute little girl, Aww. I mean, it just, it, they, they have people there from all makes and sizes, you know, little kids all the way up to senior citizens and everybody is a hero during the fall on the piers, Bree. That's so true. And here to tell us more about the pier and jetty life is our trusty captain from the Southwest region, Ron Houston. Well, you know, I'm grateful to have the opportunity to open up the show representing the CCA Southwest region. So don't forget to get out there and show you some of your support. But you know what? Just to name a few, the Naples Pier, the Fort Myers Beach Pier, the Boquilla Pier, the Marco Island Jetty, Gordon Pass, and Matanzas Catwalk a very good area is not only for people to walk out and fish, but the prime key to look for fish is structure. Now normally, just about any type of fish can be caught in these areas, as I mentioned, because, because it's a place to hide, it's a place where bait forms, but most importantly, it's actually a highway. Whatever time of the year it is, most fish pass through these areas, especially during migration, including tarpon, bluefish, mackerel, pompano, bull reds, just to name a few. Fish that typically hang around all the time are ladyfish, sheephead, black drum, mangrove snapper, and snook, again, just to name a few. Now, tackle can be different, specifically a little heavier, but also with a sport tackle light spinning guy, it's very popular. Now, live bait, cut bait, and a variety of artificials can be used, but I'm going to tell you right now, if you follow our reports throughout the year, you will notice the type of baits and how they change depending on what time of year. Keep up on your report, and like always, you don't always need a boat to go out and catch fish. Now the one thing that you got to make sure that you understand, we're going to take a look at the Navionics there from the southwest region. The one thing that comes to mind when we look at this, this is Gordon's Pass, and if we take a look at the sonar chart, one of the things that you see is this is where all the fish will migrate up and down, and when they get to the jetty, this week being jetties and piers, they're going to have to go in and around it. So the one thing that I learned when I was there a few weeks ago is this is a great place to catch ladyfish and a variety of other things to take offshore as bait. All right, Ronnie, let's go ahead and continue. Tell me what else you have for offshore. You know what? We're going inshore, boss. On the inshore side, we're going to go with the redfish. We're going to go from Turtle Key in the 10,000 Islands to Rabbit Key Pass. Now, very important, with the moon being out overnight, early morning outgoing, working outer gulf points, especially with our giant schools of small bait on top of the water. I promise you, the fish are underneath these baits, although it might not be looking like they're eating these baits, they've been gorging all night, but still are feeding underneath these schools. And I strongly suggest on top water walk the dog lures, which I've done, silver spoons, but also just getting below these baits, the Bass Assassin Elite Shiner, and the color that's been working real good, meat hook on a quarter ounce jig head, or you can use cut shrimp, ladyfish, mullet on, on a knocker rig, all have been producing. And believe it or not, right now in the 10,000 islands into the Everglades region, you can catch a lot of fish right now, anywhere from 24 to 30 inches, but having patience and getting out early seems to be the key. Now, before I go offshore, very important week with 911 being this week, get on the bayfront down in Naples, take a soldier fishing, and please, Stop what you're doing. Promise me you'll get out and support your local fire, police, and most important, United States military. Now, on the offshore side, the permit. Bite still, re still remains to be good from Marco Island to Four Myers Beach. Fishing most wrecks 15 to 25 miles out, using live crabs, sight casting, or simply drifting across the structure. 
and outskirts up to a couple hundred yards away in a pattern 360 degrees. Also blind casting bright colored bucktails tipped with shrimp as well as putting a live shrimp on a bright colored troll right. Reports I have right now, fish on top early. As the pressure picks up and the heat picks up, fish are going to be down below. So keep an eye on your bottom finder. Fish averaging 15 to 35 pounds. Now with the full moon, the mangrove snappers. Great reports from Stump Pass to Sanibel. Nighttime snapper fishing as long as the weather is moderate. As close as 5 miles and out to 12 miles. Concentrating right now on wrecks and ledges. Obviously, chumming is very important. And also, a light leader as low as 10, put up to 20 through the bright moon. You can flatline or drop back with a split shot. And if the phosphorescence isn't, not, isn't bad, small bucktails tip with shrimp, live pilchards, cut shrimp, squid and herring have all been working. Weather looks good for the weekend. So get out there and catch you some fish. All right, thanks, Ronnie. Great report from the CCA Southwest region. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the Florida Outdoor Experience hotspots from the Southwest region. <clears throat> In short, Tarpon, late afternoon high into the night, Marco to Fort Myers Beach, fishing the passes using live ladyfish, mullet, or pinfish. And then offshore, Cobias, Gordon's Pass to Sanibel, fishing wrecks, 8 to 15 miles out using large chugging lures, pinfish, herring pilchards and artificial eels, Bree. Well, it seems the West is dominating the top the of the West show tonight. The West is. All right, well, we're going to shimmy on up the coastline to the Northwest region where the one shimmy, and only shimmy. Hagster resides. Hagster. Hagster. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a bunch of jetties and piers in my region. Uh, we've got one of the biggest in Florida, the Sunshine Skyway Pier. It spans from the mouth of the Skyway, goes from St. Pete all the way over to Bradenton area. And it's a huge fishing pier. It's the old Skyway Bridge that they've turned into a fishing pier. And just like Ronnie was saying earlier, um, a variety of fish can be caught out there depending on the season. Uh, sharks, tarpon, uh, mangrove snapper, grouper, kingfish, which is usually an offshore fish, but the shipping channel is pretty deep and we get some kingfish. I've even heard of sailfish being hooked, not landed, but hooked off the Skyway. So it's a great place to get out there and fish if you don't have a boat, like we're talking about right now. Um, bait's usually concentrated underneath these piers because of the lights on them. It's a great place to go out and catch bait before you head offshore. Rick was talking about that earlier. So you can go out there, catch your bait right there, either with a sabiki rig or throw a cast out off the bridge and start fishing right there. A lot of guys get out there and shark fish this time of year. There's a bunch of sharks. Uh, that will migrate in and out of the pass right there at, uh, at a Tampa Bay. And they'll get out there with their big shark rods and hook some really good fish. So there's a lot of good fishing to be had in shore um, on these piers and, and jetties throughout my entire region, all the way up the coast. There's great little places that you can get out. Um, once you get to the northern part of my region, the jetties start disappearing unless you're in rivers and in some creeks and tidal areas. But uh, you can still get out there and get some saltwater fishing done if you don't have a boat in Florida. Um, moving inshore, the Captain Mario Costello out of Homosassa reports the trout have been starting to show up. Ronnie was talking about this earlier with the little bait schools. There's little dimpling bait schools all over the surface in all the region right now, and you want to look for trout around these. Uh, most of the trout right now are going to be mid to upper size slot fish, and he's catching them right now on a DOA cow on an 8 ounce jig head bounced off the bottom, worked very slowly around these bait schools. He's also catching some good sized flounder while he's doing this. All right. Moving off. Or, yeah, go ahead, man. Don't wait on me. The northern, <laughs> the northern part of the region, the grouper fishing has been anywhere from 50 to 90 feet. The southern part of my region, it's been a little bit deeper. It's been 70 to 120, producing some great gag grouper right now. Pinfish, pigfish, and cut sardines on a standard bottom rig fished over the rock piles and ledges. Heavy gear right now is a must. There's some really good fish out there and some really big grouper, so make sure you have some heavy tackle to get them out there so you don't get rocked up. Once you get racked up, um, they'll usually get down there and start grunting or drumming, and it kind of shuts the bite down. So heavy tackle, get on them quick, the reel don't set, and get them off the bottom. Also offshore right now, plenty of sharks throughout the region. Any kind of offshore structure or reef in 60 feet of water and out, there's an abundance right now of spinner, black tip sharks, um, all over these structures right now. There's a lot of bait on them. And these are great fighting fish, something fun, all everybody can do. They're they're easy to fool. Put out a chum bag, cut up some pieces of bait, drift them out behind the back of the boat. Just a piece of number four wire and a four-out BMC circle hook, and lots of chum will bring them right to the back of the boat. 
All right, thanks, Jeff. Great report from the Yeti Northwest region. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the Drummond Community Bank hotspots from the Northwest region. And sure, the redfish bite throughout the region remains strong on the top of the tide. Use <clears throat> cut bait for those redfish. And then offshore groupers, 70 to 120 feet of water over rock piles and ledges using pinfish sardines on a standard bottom rig. You know anything about standard bottom rigs? I don't think so. Oh, well, okay. Well, coming up next on the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report, we're going off the deep end That's with Captain, bottom rig right there. Captain Harry and then visiting the Central <laughs> East region. We'll be right back. The Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Chevy. Find new roads. Best parts, best prices. Bennett Auto Supply. Yeti Coolers. Wildly stronger. Keep ice longer. CCA Florida. The voice of recreational anglers for over 25 years. Contender Boats. Performance through innovation. Humminbird. Simply, clearly, better. The Florida Lottery. Just imagine. And King Sailfish Mounts. www.kingsailfish.com It's Chevy Truck Month. Time when truck guys can depend on great offers on the 2014 North American Truck of the Year. I was born free. Chevy Silverado. From the family of the most dependable, longest-lasting, full-size pickups on the road. Get $7,000 total value on the Silverado Crew Cab LT All-Star Edition, or trade up to get $8,500. See your local Chevy dealer today. Yamaha's next-generation V6 four-strokes are changing the game. Mid-range power was awesome. Fuel, the burn, it's unbelievable. Couldn't believe the speed and the fuel economy is pretty impressive. I mean, I couldn't believe the power. It was like a, just, this morning, doing a quarter mile on a drag strip. And them things are like, it's a whole other game. So I made the switch. Experience the difference for yourself during the Yamaha Discover V6 Offshore Demo Tour. See why we call it the Game Changer. Jackpot! Jackpot. Jackpot. Jackpot? Jackpot. 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 Get ready for the Jackpot family of scratch-off games from the Florida Lottery. With a top prize of $2 million, jackpots will happen. Will you be ready for yours? Yeah, I got... I got... It. The Florida Lottery. Just imagine. It's been said that a bad day of fishing is better than a good day at the office. But down here in the Florida Keys, we have to disagree. Because with over 200 of the world's best charter boat captains and guides, there's no such thing as a bad day of fishing. The Florida Keys and Key West. Continuing the revolution, faster, drier, even better built. Designed around Yamaha's latest technology outboards. Still built by the same craftsmen and anglers who launched the Bay Boat Revolution. Whether chasing world records, or time on the water with the family, or anything in between, there's a new Pathfinder model for you. Pathfinder, number one for a reason, still. Time to go over the news and notes from the FWC. September 13th, don't miss the Sportsman's Expo in Tampa. September 24th is Wild Wednesday Outdoor Cooking Workshop in Brooksville. And October 4th, we have a kids fishing clinic in St. Petersburg. For more information, visit myfwc.com. Now it's time to go off the deep end. Well, Harry, welcome back to the Hummingbirds Off the Deep End, the Jägermeister Workbench. And Harry, I got to say, you know about fishing jetties and I've, piers. I've done a little bit of that stuff, you so sure I've have. done pretty good. Uh, we're talking about our king sailfish mounts. Uh, mackerel right there, that's something that off the piers and jetties you're going to get all the time and stuff. And there's little tricks and techniques on getting that stuff out there. Uh, one is, is downsize your tackle. Don't go real heavy, you know, 20-pound mono. Go to 10 and 15-pound for mackerel. 
and a particular jig like this, it's a sidewinder. Now that thing darts around real fast, and Mac will like hitting something that's really quick that's, that's out there. So you're going to wing that out as far as you can and just reel as fast as you can and just jig it a little bit, and the Mac will go crazy over that. Now, if you want to slow down your, 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 your thing, deal. Now, this again, this is like a three-quarter ounce to a one ounce uh, spoon. Now, this is another deal. You're going to cast it pretty far out. And if, if you see pilchers in the area or any other bait fish that's in that area also, Rick, you want to be able to just work that area because those mackerel are hanging around those big schools of pilchers and everything. And you want to be able to wing something like that out. Uh, you want to get out a little further. And there's all different kinds of these leaded spoon-type spoon type jigs, jigs that work really, really well. This thing will throw, you can throw that thing out a mile. You, you know, you'll be the furthest guy out on the pier to, to, to get that out there. And uh, they hold up really well. They're not that expensive, and they, and they work really, really well for mackerel. Um, if we're going to switch it up a little bit, and you want to start, you know, pompano, it's, that's a cool little fish to catch out there. Uh, this really is, good to eat, obviously. Oh, man, really good eating. And uh, this is a double hook rig. You got your pyramid lead. Now, what's, right. the, what's good about the pyramid lead is when you cast it out there, it's going to hold bottom really well. Right. Or if it's an egg sinker, it's going to roll across the bottom and the rig's going to be moving around a lot and it's not doesn't work as well. So that's it's a, that's that type of deal. And you're going to use a sand flea on here. Okay. Now sand fleas, which we use here, this is something we actually just started carrying at Harry's now, uh, which we never did, but off our beaches out here, we get these sand fleas. And you'll take this and you'll just go, you'll see it's these just little... just rakes, you just take a scoop of sand right off well, of the beach, right? What you're going to look for is you'll see those little water spots coming up when you walk the beach, right when the water comes in and out. And, and I learned a trick from this one of my guys, Roman, my, my manager at the shop. He goes at night. Night! He says nighttime, they're, they're, you'll see twice as many at night. And he says you just scoop up, you'll have your limit of... <laughs> you'll so fill your so bucket he's catching the, the bait at night? Catching them at night. Is throws he fishing them in his at five night too? No, he puts, he puts them in his five-gallon bucket and he's okay. ready for the morning bite. So he'll uh -huh. go either early, early morning when it's still dark. And he's got a flashlight and he'll use that flashlight. And uh, it works phenomenal. Now, you also, you got these little jigs that work real well. That's this particular jig for Pablo, casting off the, the beach, off the pier, that particular jig, you're gonna wing it out there and you're just gonna just pop it. And it darts work back it and real forth slow. And it's gonna, it's gonna dart, point, it's point, gonna point, do point. all kinds of weird stuff and you're gonna pop it and pop it and work it. You're driving a cameraman nuts over there trying yeah, you to probably follow that, are. you know? And then not to pass up on your snook. You're gonna have your snook around your, you know, the hocktail, this jig has been around forever. It's a great, great jig and it works phenomenal. Uh, for snook, not that you won't get a mackerel on that either, and then also, which is old reliable, it's actually not too old, but these little guys right here, the DDXs, um, it's a grub tail right. type, big rubber thing with a big hook. Now this is for snook fishing. Yeah. This is for off your jetties working the current, and it's got this a much heavier head on it, because anytime you have current, you're going to want weight. You're going to be able to work that bottom as much as you can, because those snook are on the bottom, ready to ambush something going by, so it works really, really well. And there's there's other other lures again out there that'll that for casting out there and getting, they all look like some there. type of bait, which is kind of really cool. Which is what you like to do and everything. So it works really really all well. Right. Good job, Harry. Well, you got Bree, it. it appears that we are out of time, so we need to jetty into a new region. Oh. Gosh, Rick, really? <laughs> You're stealing the show here. Okay, bringing you this week's offering from the Central East region is Fine Line Fishing Charters, Captain Jim Ross. Well, thanks a lot, Bree. You know, the, there's been some really good catches in the Central East region, piers and jetties, over the past couple of weeks. And anglers can really look forward to snook, jack, permit, tarpon, bluefish, and a lot of other species from those structures, especially through the summer months and coming on into the months of September and even into October. Sebastian Inlet really is a name that's synonymous with excellent jetty fishing. And the north and south jetties there both produce species on a pretty regular basis. The catwalks there are also extremely good places to fish from, especially at night. Now the Melbourne Pier, the O'Galley Pier, the Titusville Pier, there's a lot of different piers that are in the rivers as well. And anglers can fish from those and catch trout and a bunch of different species, but they can also dip net shrimp from those structures. And that's a really neat thing to be able to do at nighttime. Now, the jetties at Canaveral and Ponce can also be pretty productive. If you're fishing from a boat, though, those conditions uh, don't, or the, the conditions there need to be fairly rough, and you can't really fish those from the land. So the boat is definitely needed, but you don't need it to be too rough, but just slightly rough so that it's knocking the bait fish around the rocks. You want to throw at dawn or dusk, uh, you know, something that's artificial. 
And then during the daytime, stick with your live baits. You're going to find that you're going to have better luck on the fish that are holding around those rocks at, the, at, at that time with the live bait. <clears throat> now, going inshore, my inshore report, we've got tarpon this week because there's tarpon everywhere. They're feeding in the surf zones. They're feeding throughout the, the jetties. They're feeding all up and down in the intracoastal waterway as well. But right now, Bethune Beach to Playa Linda seems to be a pretty hot spot. And also from Patrick Air Force Base down to the Melbourne Beach area seem to be two real hot spots. You want to use live croakers or pogies or mullet, and you want to put them on a VMC circle hook. Or if you're throwing artificials, try a large Rapala x 14 or one of the new Williamson Surface Pro poppers or new Surface Pro darters, uh, especially if you're fishing from the surf because you can cast them a long way out into the breaking waves or past the breaking waves if you need to to catch those tarpon. Now, back in the lagoon systems, live ladyfish or large plugs that imitate pogies are working really well. North in the Mosquito Lagoon, uh, that area from basically about Tiger Shoal through to about Georgia's Bar is working good. And then in Coco through Titusville in the Indian River is where you want to look. We've got fish rolling and feeding all through the ICW, though, so don't overlook any place that you do see them rolling. And most of these tarpon are running from about 50 to 90 pounds, so there's some really big fish in there. But we've got fish that are scaling over 120 pounds right now. And I've got a photo of Bunky Ray. He was out with me the other day, and we caught one of those really large fish. Now, this fish was somewhere around 120 to 125 pounds, and this one hit one of the Rapala gliding wraps, which you may, if you look at your, at your local tackle store, you may still be able to find a couple of those around. And that is a fantastic bait when it comes to imitating a pogey. Now, going offshore, our king mackerel has been, you know, it's just been a solid winter, uh, summer, spring, and it looks like we're going to have a solid fall on them as well. Most of the fish are on the 70 to 90 foot reefs, and if you're chasing them in the near shore waters, you can find them around those Spanish mackerel and bonita pods that we've seen feeding in the 25 to 50 foot depths this week. The reefs are like the party grounds, the East 11 out of Ponds, 8A, Chris Benson, Pelican Flats out of Canaveral, or Bethel Shoal in the Pines area, the Sebastian, are really, really good, consistent spots to go find your king mackerel at. And you want to slow troll a live bait, like a greenie or a pilchard, or a small bluefish or pogies or mullet, anything that's live and will troll properly, you can put it on a wire stinger rig and you can catch 15 to 25 pound kingfish to put in your fish box. Now, speaking of those Spanish mackerel, they do make good trolling baits for the kings, but they make really good table fare as well. And right now, the 20 to 60 foot depth throughout my entire region, there are huge schools chasing the glass minnows around. You'll see them mixed in with the bonitas, or you'll just see them by themselves. So if you're just trolling a spoon or a lip diving plug, that's the best way to catch them. And I like to throw that X-Wrap 10 in the olive green color. That one's dynamite. Also, small Clark spoons, like I was saying, or a white hookup jig. Seems to be a really, really thing, a good thing to uh, cast or troll as well. Most of the mackerel are going to be right in that one to two pound range, but you know what? You can find fish to four pounds. And right, and right here I've got a picture of Vincent DeSalvo, and he had a really nice uh, time with me the other day. We caught just Spanish mackerel after Spanish mackerel, and we were using those little Rapala x wraps that I was just talking about. All right, Jim, great report. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the hookup lure hotspots from the Central East region. Inshore, Sebastian Inlet over the oversized slot redfish and snook at night. Use Rapala X wraps in 14s in the olive green color. And then offshore, King Mackerel in the 8A mm. and Chris Benson, Benson Reef. Use live pogies on a wire stinger rig. You know, Jim Ross is a very nice voice to listen to. He does. That's he why does. he has his own radio show. I know he does. Okay, <laughs> we've said it before and we're going to say it again. Go ahead. Three great tournaments, one, one weekend. Three great tournaments, one weekend. September 25th through the 28th, presented by Marie Max. The 16th annual New Smyrna Beach Billfish Invitational, where anglers fish with unrestricted tackle in this offshore world championship qualifying event to target marlin and sailfish. The small boat division includes outboards and vessels under 40 feet. Anglers can compete for additional cash and prizes by entering the NSBBC tournament simultaneously. The fifth annual New Smyrna Beach Backwater Tournament allows anglers to fish inshore while competing for the heaviest redfish and trout combination. Multiple tournament awards and cash prizes are available for entrance. 
And the third event is the inaugural new Smyrna Beach Blue Water Challenge, where anglers fish unrestricted tackle for dolphin, wahoo, and tuna as a separate event or in conjunction with the Billfish Invitational. Each entry is eligible for a $5,000 cash prize for the heaviest fish weighed. In addition to the awards, you could win an invitation to the Offshore World Championship Tournament. Goals are to promote fall fishery, marine conservation, and provide scholarships to local high school school students. The tournament has donated over $150,000 since 1999. Look at that tuna. Man, that's Man, nice. that's nice. sushi on the hook. Sushi! <laughs> We're bringing you this weekend's reports from the Northeast and Panhandle regions when we troll on back only on the Chevy Florida. Insider Fishing Report. Report. All right. Yay. The Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Bass Assassin and Saltwater Assassin. The best lures, period. Blue Water Outriggers. Everything for your outdoor adventures. Guy Harvey Clothing by Aftco. Crokies, made in the USA. Drummond Community Bank. Costa, see what's out there. And Casa Vieja Lodge, five-star angling in beautiful Guatemala. Jackpot! Jackpot. Jackpot. Jackpot? Jackpot. 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 Get ready for the Jackpot family of scratch-off games from the Florida Lottery. With a top prize of $2 million, jackpots will happen. Will you be ready for yours? I got, I got it. <laughs> the Florida Lottery. Just imagine. What is CCA? CCA has been representing recreational fishermen for over 25 years, and when your rights to fish are threatened, the CCA is there to make sure government regulators are making sound decisions. I'm a life member of CCA, and when fishery decisions are being made, the CCA in the room is fighting for our recreational rights. We need to give our kids the same opportunities to fish as we did. Do what I did. Go to CCAFlorida.org and join for only $25 so you can protect your recreational angling rights. Hi, I'm Harold Bennett. My dad started Bennett Auto Spy over 57 years ago. Things have changed since then. We've grown to 33 stores and opened a 93,000 square foot distribution center. But one thing has stayed the same, our focus on the customer. That's why we have the most knowledgeable parts specialists in the business, and we only offer quality auto parts at the guaranteed lowest prices. The next time you need anything for your vehicle, think Bennett Auto Supply. Best, best parts, best, best prices, prices, Bennett Auto, auto Supply. Supply. It's Chevy Truck Month, time when truck guys can depend on great offers on the 2014 North American Truck of the Year. Chevy Silverado, from the family of the most dependable, longest-lasting, full-size pickups on the road. Get $7,000 total value on the Silverado Crew Cab LT All-Star Edition, or trade up to get $8,500. See your local Chevy dealer today. Welcome back, everyone. We have an exciting new contest to tell you about. Hosted by StayInCostaRica.com, enter to win a Costa Rican getaway with Sportsman Adventures. This is a three-night stay for four people at Los Sueños Resort, and it includes an adventure tour and a day of fishing. Sounds like a blast to me. So to enter to win, go to ChevyFloridaInsiderFishingReport.com or SportsmanAdventures.com. And Rick, I, I see a friend over there. Who's that? This is Eric Raystrick from Eric's Outboard. And Eric, you know, there's a lot of wondering or misconception about RPM ranges for four strokes versus two strokes. So let's start off by on a four stroke, what's the RPM range that we want to accomplish on a bay boat or an inshore boat? Well, the rec recommended high RPM range is 6,000 RPM. So you want to you want to kind of prop to the high end of the range. All right. And so after that, what if you just if you still have a two stroke motor? Where do we want, what's the RPM range for two strokes? Generally, it's five to 5,500 RPMs. All right, so Eric, if we have a boat that's not turning those RPMs, certainly a bay boat, you gotta have a great hole shot a lot of times to get up on shallow water or, an, or a technical polling skiff. So if you decide you need to get more RPMs, all right, so what are we gonna do? We gotta go up or down and pitch? You wanna pitch. go down and pitch. 
So for every inch in pitch, how many RPMs? 200 do we RPMs get? is a general rule of thumb. Okay. Now, Eric, one of the things I've recognized over the years is when we run across a lot of the shallow flats, um, quite often, you know, we do some damage to our propellers, like this particular propeller. Yeah, this What guy. would we do if, can we get this reconditioned? Sure. What would you recommend? You sure can. You can take a prop like this to a local prop shop, and usually they can beat out the dents and dings and stuff, and generally you do that two or three times at the most, and then it becomes not so much, not so worth it. Now, when we have the propeller off, is there anything on the prop shaft that we need to look for? Sure, Rick. A lot of, a lot of times what will happen, you'll get fishing line through the, through the prop holes here on the side, and it'll get around the prop shaft seals and eat up the seals and cause water intrusion. This is a no-no. You don't want that to happen. And then one last thing. You know, when we run in shallow water, a lot of times we get sand, silt, whatever. What about the impeller? How often should that be replaced? Generally for the inside, you know, the inshore guys, probably 100 hours or a year, whichever comes first. All right, well, it sounds like to me, we are now up to speed on how to get more performance out of our technical polling skiff or our bay boat and be able to get a good whole shot. Thank you, Eric, for coming from Eric's outboard. Thank you. All right. Great Bree? job, Eric. We, <laughs> we are next going to our saltwater cowboy, Russell Theron from the Northeast region, and I'm sure he's ready to rock and roll. Hey there, Bree. Hey, Rick, and I sure am. And you know what? I'm excited to tell you guys about our pier fishing, the jetty and surf fishing that we have here in northeast Florida. Now, to start out with, from working from the north to the south, we've got six great fishing piers here in northeast Florida. The Fort Clinch State Park Fishing Pier here on the north end of Amelia Island. The George Crady Bridge Fishing Pier that crosses Nassau Sound. The Jacksonville Beach Fishing Pier the St. Augustine Beach Fishing Pier, the Flagler Beach Fishing Pier. A lot of our surf fishermen love to fish down at the south end here of Amelia Island, and they, the north end of Little Tarbert Island is great surf fishing, so is Milano Beach, and the north end of Anastasia State Park, where you can fish the jetties at the St. Augustine Inlet. The surf fishing is also great down at Matanzas Inlet and along Flagler Beach. Now, I want to move in short and start telling you guys about our We, you know, this weekend you're going to want to set your alarm clock for this weekend's red fishing. It's going to be a good one. Now, try to be on the water by 6.30 a.m. to target the early morning redfish bite along the ICW. Now, look for schools of redfish staging during the low tides near the creek mouth or in front of large mud flats. Once the tides start coming in, fish around the oyster beds, and as the tides rise, move up to the grass lines. And during the last of the incoming tide, look for the tailing reds on the flooded grass flats. Some of the best baits to fish with during the low tides on an eighth ounce hookup jig head are with live shrimp, mud menace, fingerling mullet, or a quarter section of a fresh blue crab. If you wish to fish artificials like I do, Use a saltwater bass assassin sea shad, bad to the bone jerk bait. And be sure to rig it weedless if you're gonna be fishing in the grass. Typical size of the redfish are gonna be running anywhere from three to six pounds. I have a redfish photo of Captain Tommy Derringer holding a good looking St. Augustine redfish he caught recently. Way to go, Tommy. All right, moving offshore, we wanna talk about one of my favorite fish to eat and that's the gag trooper. I had a great conversation with our offshore legend, Captain Robert Johnson, the owner, the owner of Cody Lynn Charters out of St. Augustine, Florida. He said the cat grouper fishing has been real slow, but he looks forward to a, the next cool down where that grouper bite will turn on. Captain Robert said to fish the big grouper from 135 to 180 foot of water over the artificial reefs, wrecks, ledges, and structures. Jeff Roberts said the best way to target the largest groupers is by using big live bait. Now, you can, uh, you know, as long as whatever you want to do, um, you can also get... All right, well, we lost Russell here, but what he was saying is Captain Robert Johnson, the owner of the Jody Lynn Charters out of St. Augustine, he said the gag grouper fishing has been very slow, but he's looking forward to the next cool down for the big bite on the groupers. He said Captain Robert also said that the fish 
uh, are out to 130 to 180 feet of water. They're just about on all the artificial reefs, wrecks, ledges, and structures. Robert also says to target the large groupers using live baits. Whatever that, whatever kind of bait works, like pinfish, pogies, all different types. The, just the bigger the better is what's going to be able to. Also, there's some smaller scamp groupers love the live cigar menace for bait. Typical size grouper in their region right now, 10 to 20 pounds, and those scamps are running 5 to 15 pounds. His second species, sailfish. Robert also says to watch for a few sailfish to show up when the water cools down. The best bait, uh, best sail fishing really begins late in October and in November. Target sailfish around large schools of sardine that are deep and holding in 140 to 180 feet of water. The most recommended method for catching these sailfish in their region is to slow troll at eight knots with small ballyhoo using 5-0 to 7-0 uh, circle hooks, trolling a dredge behind your vessel as a teaser, uh, which is a big plus. Those typical size fish are four to seven feet long and make sure that you don't forget to join the CCA from the CCA Northeast region. Let's take a look at the hot spots from the Northeast region. Captain Russell says, in short, target redfish by sight fishing along the ICW during the early morning low tides and during the noontime flood tide. And then offshore, catch sea bass, bee liners, trigger fish on just about any artificial reef and live bottom in 70 to 130 feet of water. You know, technical problems sometimes happen, Bree. I love live TV. It's just so much fun. You never know what's going to happen. Yes, but you right. could have given a, a southern accent, right? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and the CCA <laughs> still wants to give you a boat. And being raffled is a Contender 28 tournament series with an Ameritrail trailer, a Pathfinder with an Ameritrail trailer, and a Hell's Bay with a custom trailer. And of course, all of these beautiful boats come with Yamaha motors. But remember, if you win and don't want the boat, you can opt for a cash prize. All you have to do is go to ccaboatraffle.org and enter to win, Rick. Have you entered? I have like five times. No, I'm just kidding, I have just <laughs> once. Okay, now Captain Pat Deneen is gonna tell everyone what types of species you can find off bridges, piers, and jetties in the Panhandle region. Yeah, Bree, we've got four large Gulf Front piers, uh, one in Panama City, one in Fort Walton Beach, one in Navarre, and also one in Pensacola. And typically off the piers, they're, they're going to target king and Spanish mackerel throughout the summer, Kobe in the springtime, Pompano in the springtime. Uh, lately, the Fort Walton pier, uh, the Oakloose Island pier, has been seeing a lot of fail, fail fish. Uh, several are hooked and, and released uh, almost daily over the last week and a half or so. In fact, there was even a sailfish inside the Destin Harbor today, so there are some sailfish near shore and you can certainly get to them off of a pier. Uh, within our bays, we've got some good bridge fishing for redfish, mangrove snappers, black drum, and Spanish. Uh, local to me, the Shalimar Bridge has a really dedicated group of people fishing every day, and I see them catching drums and Spanish mackerel and trout. Uh, the Three Mile Bridge over in Pensacola, there's a, the, the old Three Mile Bridge is now up here in Pensacola Bay. It's an exceptional spot, especially for white trout during the wintertime and also redfish. And then the jetties at East Pass and Destin, Really good for redfish uh, throughout the year. Bluefish fall through spring, and it's exceptional for pompano in the springtime. And then finally over in St. Andrews uh, in Panama City, the St. Andrews Pass. They've got a very long deep water jetty. Great for redfish and mangrove snappers, but sometimes they also catch groupers, bonitas, king mackerel, and other deep water species. So there's plenty of opportunities for, you know, for the shorebound anglers up here in the panhandle. All right, let's stay in shore, Pat. What do you got, yeah. Bubba? Rick, the, the jackervels or schools of jackervels roaming throughout the bays, bayous, and sound, and it's pretty typical for this late summer, early fall you know, pattern. Captain Chuck Kemper over in Navarre, he's been finding them daily, busting up on mullets and pogies in the Navarre area in the sound. Uh, it's a run and gun type fishing fishery. The calm mornings, you'll see them, or often even hear them before you see them as they crash these baits. Run to them, cast topwater baits like a skitter walk or a, or a surface strike or even a big soft swim bait. And when the wind picks up and you don't find a fish breaking the water on the top, you can often anchor up on some of the deep water bridges in the bays or even off some of the major points and chum them with, mud, with chopped menhaden, and they'll respond really well to that. The, j the jacks are running four to five pounds for the really small ones, but most of them are probably 15 to 30 plus pounds. Oh, That's 30 a great, pounder. Uh, late season, late summer fishery. All right, let's go offshore, Papa. Offshore, Rick, the past week, the spur has been the place to be. There's pretty water, islands of sargasm grass current rips and those current rips have a nice yellow brick rows of grass on them. The grass is plenty of bait and the dolphins were really numerous running up to about 30 pounds this past week. 
The wahoo were a bit hard to come by. I uh, expected to see more of them out there than we did, but there were some nice ones caught. The blue, the blue heaven out of Destin, they floated a 70 to 80 pound fish. Most of the boats that spent any time out at the spur this past week fishing encountered whiter blue marlins. Uh, grasshopper fished on Saturday on a little little birch. I mean, they caught two blues, uh, one about 150, one about 400, and several of the other boats have definitely caught some blue, blue marlins and released them. Uh, it's pretty fishy. The blue water seems to be pushing north and east. Uh, and there's a nice photo there of my Uncle Joe Oberly, and that's my, my mate Adam Schroeder on the right, and that's one of the many dolphins we caught uh, out of the spur last week. That's nice, Pat. What else you got for us offshore? Offshore, I spoke with Captain Tony Davis, and he's uh, catching kings and a variety of bottom fish at the southwest edge. He said the water in there is a pretty clear blue water, and uh, tons of, uh, like I said, a variety of fish. Live baiting on the surface, he's catching kings, dolphins, bonitas, and a few black tunas. Uh, light tackle fishing on the bottom uh, over the break, the national, national bottom break. They're catching vermilion snappers and mangrove snappers. The vermilion snappers are using a two-hook chicken rig baited with cut squid or, or cut cigar minnows. And then the mangroves is a Carolina rig with a long light leader and a small live bait. And it's, it's really just a good mixed bag of fishing uh, and a variety of, a variety of bites. All right, thanks, Pat. Great report. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the Blue Water Outrigger hotspots from the Panhandle region. Inshore, Chum, the Midway Bay Bridge with live or dead pogies for Spanish mackerel, Jack Revals, or redfish. And then offshore, troll between the spur and the squiggles for Blue Water Pelagics. You know anything about being squiggled? Sometimes. Oh. I'm not, okay, I'm not really sure, Rick. <laughs> You're being confused. <laughs> okay, well, Easily speaking done. of... Pat, oh. Deneen, yes, Rick. Yes. They need to come see you and Pat at the National Shrimp Festival they on do. October 11th and 12th in Gulf Shores, Alabama. Yes, sir. At a Chevy display area for some fishing seminars and some great giveaways. You're right. I have such a good accent. You are. <laughs> okay, guys and gals, don't cast off yet. We return. Captain Harry is giving us the skinny on some fishing swag at the Jägermeister workbench, and then we'll hear from the Central West region. Stay hooked. Dance. The Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by the Florida Keys and Key West. Come as you are. Hookup Lures, premium lures for serious anglers. FWC, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. Guy Harvey, artist, explorer, marine scientist, conservationist, diver, and fisherman. La Jolla Resort, a place for family and fishermen. Maverick Boat Company. Makers of premium boat brands, Maverick, Hughes, and Pathfinder. Navionics, we start where the road ends. It's 200 streamlined horsepower of Yamaha forward thinking. The all new F200 inline four stroke. Whether you're an offshore angler, pontoon cruiser, bay boater, or walleye hunter, the responsive and fuel efficient F200 combines amazing power and versatility in one incredibly compact and lightweight package. The all new F200. Legendary Yamaha reliability and the freedom of forward thinking. Jackpot! Jackpot. Jackpot. Jackpot? Jackpot. 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 Jackpot! Get ready for the Jackpot family of scratch-off games from the Florida Lottery. With a top prize of $2 million, jackpots will happen. Will you be ready for yours? Shit, I got, I got it. The Florida Lottery, just imagine. You know there's more to it than luck. There's fishing the right bait, the water temperature, the wind, the season, and then there's the boat. We'll put it simply, the boat matters. To own a contender is to own the best sport fishing boat on the market, period. Contender offers the most comprehensive model range with bigger, faster, and more fuel efficient boats than the competition. There's only one choice for serious anglers. Contender Boats, performance through innovation. Suffolk Safe 32 is constructed with seven strands of Dyneema and a single strand of Gore Performance Fiber. It's the roundest, longest casting line in the world. It offers superior abrasion resistance so you can fish it anywhere. It's the strongest, most sensitive, and durable small diameter braid ever to hit the water. Nice fish, Brett. Thanks. Suffolk 832, always use the best line. 
It's the Boat Show. The Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show, October 30th through November 3rd. It's a family affair. See over 1,000 boats of all shapes and sizes with factory experts on site. Catch cruising, fishing and diving seminars, free kids fishing clinics, electronics, art, jewelry and fashion, food, drinks, live music and opening night fireworks. All at the Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show, October 30th through November 3rd. Get discount tickets at showmanagement.com. Welcome back to the Jägermeister Workbench. Harry, we're over here about new products, just we, like you always do. We man. got them from Harry's. Yeah, not everything, but, some, but most of it. Uh, we've got the, these, the Olakais, the Kama, Ka, Kamaki. Kamakis? And the Kias. The Kias. I probably just destroyed the name, but probably. that's okay. But what's great about the, this particular shoe here, has a little more arch in it, Rick. Very strong sole on these things. Right. Great, again, non-skid on the boat. They're more low profile here around the ankle and you know compared to the, the Kia. The Kia has a, it's a little bit higher, as you can see there. And again, it's got the real strong sole right. and it's got a much better arch on it. Yeah. A lot of the a lot of their sandals and everything are pretty smooth, well, flat some, range. Some, some people, people need. just need a little more support, whether it's in the heel or in their toe. They don't like to go with open toe shoes, you know. Exactly. Uh, and and maybe the mesh doesn't give them enough support. That, so here's another alternative by yep. Olakai. And it's certainly great. a leader in the in, inside footwear. Inside too is super soft on the inside yep. and super dry. Pull the soles Fast out dry. and wash them. Yep, you can. So Harry, tell me about these are state of the art. This pliers, is pretty cool. Dude. These are brand new for us. This, these are the new Sims. This thing here is just super. Best thing about this already, Rick. Made in the USA, buddy. Come on now. I'm telling you right now. Made in the USA. Lightweight, aluminum, stainless steel. Uh, pretty much lifetime warranty on, for manufacturer defect. And that is one smack daddy tool. Comes with a sheath also, which is super nice. Yes. And uh, for I like the fact that it's a line. short sheath because sometimes you get these long sheaths on the back. And so then it hang, they hang they either hang way everything. down or they get hung on everything. Yeah. Very nice. Somebody was thinking at Sims. Good job, Sims guys. Sims did a great job on that there. All right, Good tell me job. about these lights, right, Harry. These are pretty cool. These nighttime are nighttime on the pier. Nighttime on the pier, going out. It's got the hang up here. Oh uh, yeah, on, you can on this particular one. And it also has, if you look at it, you can, whoops, hit the top light. So if you oh, want to okay. do a pointer, you can do a pointer also. And if you want. It's got a little cradle, so you can lay it there. If you had too much, you had tire too, you had too much Jaeger. On the trailer, yeah, oh, <laughs> the Jaeger's right. kicking it. No, <laughs> if, you, <laughs> if you're changing the tire on, the, on there or anything like that, you're good to go there. But these lights are pretty cool, very inexpensive. All right, so what do we got right, here, this is, these are, this is, again, the, the guy at my shop, his sister. This is uh, hooked up jewelry. So you can go online, go to hook up jewelry. And they have the anchor now. Everybody has the hook, the regular hook. Actually, we'll show you that they have a new child's. Uh, or the girls with small wrists. Right. So the new anchor is really sweet looking. That is cool. It's a hot looking little deal there. So hooked up jewelry uh, has their deal now, and uh, it's really nice stuff. One one last thing, we got the Rapala scale. Awesome. You know, Harry, the one thing that I find that's so important about this is there's not a lot of scales that'll go up to 50 pounds. You right. know, digitally. Digital. And this is a digital scale. Certainly very important Nine to us. Battery. Yeah. That's all it takes. And it's really important to, for us when we're fishing redfish tournaments to be able to tell that he's, you know, six pounds, seven ounces versus right. a seven, uh, you and know, you don't, pound. And those other scales that just you have to look and try to see where, yeah, where it is. And this right. is just going to be big and bold and you're going to be able to see it really nice. So it's really cool. Thank you so much for filling in with for no, Dave. It's good to be. It's good the to younger have you back. Dave here. So it's <laughs> <Yeah>. good, man. <laughs> good job over here at the Jägermeister workbench and Bree. Please, can we go to another region? Jaeger boys, of course we can. From the Central West region, this salty sweet captain, Jeff Page, has plenty of pier and jetty options for you this weekend. Take it away, Cap. Yes, we do. <clears throat> One thing we have no shortage of in the Starbright Central West region is piers or jetties. Starting to the south of my region, we're going to uh, touch base there at the El Bean Pier, which is a bridge that goes across the Mayaka River. But there's a stretch of it that is just a pier only for people to walk out on and fish. They don't have to worry about getting hit by cars or anything. 
and it's at the mouth of the Mayaka River. And this time of year especially is really good tarpon fishing, snook fishing, as well as sharks, mangrove snappers, and even some sheephead. Moving our way to the north, the Venice Fishing Pier, which is in the Gulf of Mexico, south of the Venice jetties. Venice Fishing Pier stretches out probably 300 yards into the Gulf. Then the Venice jetties is rocks on both sides of the inlet. Very good fish in both sides, uh, especially snook fishing this time of year. As we move to the north, New Pass and Big Pass, pretty much uh, inlets with rocks on each side of them. And then they have good snap, snappers, snooks, and flounders as well. And then when we get up off Braden and Beach, there's two piers. And then the Anna Maria piers, which are in the inlet there at Passage Key. And then finally, the Sunshine Skyway Fishing Pier slash Old Bridge, which is probably one of the largest fishing piers in the state of Florida. Stretches all the way across South Tampa Bay, and you can drive your car right up to where you fish. I have a photo tonight of a uh, pier master, Eric Hernandez, with a big kingfish that he caught from the Venice Fishing Pier. Man, that's a nice kingfish, Jeffrey. All right, what else you got for us inshore there, Bub? All right, inshore, we're gonna stay inshore. The snook season opened, and uh, it was pretty good. But like I said last week, more of the bigger fish are still being caught at night around bridges and jetties. As far as daytime snook fishing, Try throwing topwater plugs like the Zara Spook or the Bone Chartreuse Skitterwalk in and around the mullet schools, finger mullet or black mullet, out front of Perico Bay as well as Philippi Creek. A lot of people forget about Philippi Creek, but it's down in South Sarasota and it's a really good snook bite. Lots of nice fish are still in the passes as well. If you're going to pet fish the passes, use live filters or the Saltwater Assassin 4-inch Sea Shad in the Violet Moon pattern with imitates a, a pilchard. Uh, afternoon outgoing tide's been the best. Anchor up or use your Minn Kota spot lock feature on your iPilot. I've got a snook photo tonight of three generations of the Haynes family fishing with the mad snooker himself at night down in the Venice area with a couple nice snook. All right, let's go offshore, bub. Red grouper, red grouper bite remains strong and consistent with good keepers coming in from hard bottom and structure in that 110 foot range. Live pinfish, quailfish, and grunts, best bet, but frozen sardines will suffice. Getting the boat anchored up over your structure has been the key to catching the quality red groupers. Species two, mangrove snapper. If nothing else, this year, 2014, is gonna be remembered as the best year in a long time for mangs in the uh, Central West region, offshore as well as inshore. Look for them. They're in a lot closer right now, Rick. 50 to 100 feet of water. The water's cooled down with lots of afternoon rains. They're holding on wrecks, ledges, and hard bottom. Live shrimp, pilchards, or smaller pinfish all work good on light wire, number one or one-oh circle hooks, as well as on a half-ounce hookup jig head. Uh, they're averaging 16 to 22 inches. I've got a photo tonight of Captain Tim No, of the Flying Fish Charters, out of Marina Jack with a really nice mang he got. What a great picture of a mang. All right, Jeffrey, great report from the Star Trion Central West region. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the Tires Plus hotspots. Ensure redfish schools of mostly over slot reds are roaming the flats of South Tampa and North Sarasota Bay. Quarter ounce gold spoons and cork pinfish are your best bet. And then offshore gag groupers, nice gags and as close as 45 to 75 feet of water, hard bottom and ledges troll x wrap 20s and 30s, Bree. Just so y'all know, at home, he's not being very nice to me tonight, just oh so you know. Okay, oh next up on the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report, we're seeing what's biting down in the Keys and East regions. Oh. Okay. See ya. All right. <laughs> The Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Chevy, find new roads. Alukai, fit by nature, crafted by hand. Best parts, best prices. Bennett Auto Supply, the Florida Keys and Key West, come as you are. Rapala, catch the latest at rapala.com. Startron, cures and prevents ethanol fuel problems. And Yamaha, Reliability starts here.
It's Chevy Truck Month. Time when truck guys can depend on great offers on the 2014 North American Truck of the Year. I was born free. Chevy Silverado, from the family of the most dependable, longest lasting, full size pickups on the road. Get $7,000 total value on the Silverado Crew Cab LT All Star Edition, or trade up to get $8,500. See your local Chevy dealer today. Continuing the revolution. Faster, drier, even better built. Designed around Yamaha's latest technology outboards. Still built by the same craftsmen and anglers who launched the Bay Boat Revolution. Whether chasing world records, or time on the water with the family, or anything in between, there's a new Pathfinder model for you. Pathfinder, number one for a reason, still. I'm Captain Rick Murphy, and I'm a life member of CCA. Why am I so involved with CCA, you ask? Because I want our fisheries to be in better shape for my kids and their kids. CCA is working to ensure the future of recreational fisheries and the rights of recreational anglers. The future of fishing starts today with you. How do you want to leave things with your kids? If you're like me, you'll want to make the right choice and go to joincacaflorida.com right now. Welcome back and keeping the current moving is our captain from the Keys, Randy Tao. Hey, good evening, fish fans. You know, we've got plenty of piers in the Keys. We call them bridges. And a lot of the uh, bridges we have from Key Largo down to Key West, you can fish on them, but not every one. There are certain ones that are going to have uh, the old bridge as a fishing pier. And certainly, you'll see on the newer bridge a big sign that says no fishing from bridge. So you probably don't want to get out on that one. But fishing on these bridges, it's just like the rest of the fishing. Time and conditions are important. What are you going to go after? Is it on an incoming tide, an outgoing tide? Uh, a lot of these bridges will hold mangrove snappers and jack curvels and barracudas. And if you really want to target some of the better fish like a tarpon or a snook, you're going to want to go at night. Now, a lot of these bridges, they're not lit, so you're going to have to bring some sort of uh, lantern or a light out there to see. But a lot of times on a full moon like we have now, there's a nice shadow line along these bridges, and the tarpon and snook will get a little active. And uh, if you want to use live bait, certainly shrimp are always good. A pinfish is good. And also some artificial lures will work for you as well. But you want to understand your tide and what you're trying to fish for. That's really important to go bridge fishing. Um, if you want to just have some fun and you don't really care, well, you're probably going to catch some grunts or something like that. There's always something hanging around those bridges. And the best ones in the upper keys, channel number two, channel number five, and long key bridge are some of my favorites I grew up on as a kid. All right, Randy, tell me about the uh, mutton snapper fishing, bud. You know, this week, the mutton snapper fishing's been great. The dolphin offshore slowed down a little bit, so guys are moving inshore. And I've been finding some real nice uh, mutton snappers drifting out in that 140, 150 feet of water that I like. And uh, I like to use a, a braided line, 30 to 50 pound, a long leader. That's kind of key to mutton snapper fishing, a 40-foot leader, about 40-pound test is what I like to use, and enough lead to get to the bottom. A live blue runner, a live uh, ballyhoo, or a pinfish is a great bait, and you're just going to get out there. If you got the wind and the current, the boat's going to drift, and as long as you can track your drift, if you're going to go parallel to the shoreline uh, along the reef, you're going to stay in that depth a lot longer, whether, uh, you know, you're whichever way you're going. If you don't have that condition and you're blowing straight in, a lot of times you pass through the zone that's holding the fish very quickly, so you got to move a lot. Sometimes in a situation like that, you might want to anchor down. Even though it's in deep water, you can still anchor in that 150 feet and put your baits on the bottom and come up with some nice mutton snappers. You can also find some of these mutton snappers now if you're yellowtailing on the edge of the reef. There's been some up in the chum slicks of guys uh, that are yellowtailing. If you're there for any length of time, you're attracting other fish, and it's a pretty good idea to drop a bait down for one of those. 
All right, Randy, before we go any further in your report, I want to take a look at something that we're talking about structure, and certainly Hummingbirds 360 really allows us to scan structure. Now, the other day, I actually saw this submerged tree, but what I wasn't able to tell is how the fish might be piled up on top. And as I looked on my traditional sonar looking straight down, I could see the bait gathering, and then we also had some bigger fish that were laying in and around the top of this structure. The nice thing about this 360 is that we're in 19 feet of water, but more importantly, when I look, we also had the range zoomed in. And as you zoom in the range, guys, your detail is gonna become more apparent. So we're at a 100 foot range with a 25 foot ring. So keep that in mind if you have Hummingbirds 360. All right, Randy, tell us about the triple tail fishing. You know, this time of year, everybody gets focused on snook and redfish, and we kind of forget about the triple tails. It's a great fish to catch. Uh, they're out mostly in the, um, the park boundary marker area, that uh, western edge of the Gulf, and also some of the channels leading into Flamingo. But the incoming tide has been good, especially around this full moon we're having. And these triple tails will float in. They're up on the surface, and they're, they're not hard to spot. You're going to see something white floating on the surface. And uh, a lot of times these triple tails just float in, and they're, they're pretty user-friendly. If you've got a shrimp or a small fly that you can cast to them, hit them right in the head. You've got to get close to them and you don't have to lead them much, and a lot of times these triple tail will pile right on whatever you throw in front of them. Now also, we're starting to get into the time of year where the, the lobster guys are putting traps out there, so you're going to see trap buoys along the outside of the park boundaries, and those traps will uh, hold these tri triple tails. They'll sit behind them, and you'll think it's a clump of weeds, and it's going to turn out to be a nice triple tail. So. You can target these triple tails looking at the buoy lines, and you can also drive around and look for these fish up on the surface. They're great fun to catch, and they're certainly excellent to eat. All right, what else you got for me, Bub? The mangrove snappers. You know, here again, we focus on some of the other fish and the mangrove snappers, some of my favorite to eat as well. They're pretty plentiful right now in most of the channels behind Isla Mirada and all the way back to Flamingo. Now, as you get a little closer to Flamingo, your water clarity uh, gets a little muddier and you can't see the bottom as well. But to the, to the west of Flamingo, those channels are still clear and you want to get along the edge of them. You want to find moving water. You don't want to have a, a, a stagnant area where there's no water moving. And a, a shrimp will work great. Usually the smaller ones are going to bite the shrimp. If you want to target some of the bigger snappers, they will be there. Just cast out away from the boat. Just use a, uh, a small pinfish or a pilchard on a quarter ounce hookup is one of my favorites to use. All right, thanks, Randy. Great report from the Florida Keys region. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the La Jolla hotspot from the Florida Keys inshore. Mm -hmm. Mangrove snappers. Look along the, the edges of the channels from Isla Mirada to Flamingo. Use small pinfish or live pilchards on a quarter ounce hookup. And then offshore, blackfin tuna. Fish the offshore humps at sunrise or just before dark. Troll small dark feathers and lures way back, 100 to 200 feet back. Way, way back. Way back. Way back. All right, now it's time to tell you about some tournaments in the Florida Keys. The Marathon oh. International Bonefish Tournament, scheduled for September 18th to the 21st, is one of the oldest angling competitions in the Florida Keys. Awards include the tongue in cheek wet pants titles for anglers wading from shore. The Mad Dog Mandish Fishing Classic, scheduled for October 3rd through the 4th, has both offshore and inshore divisions. A portion of the tournament proceeds benefits Mariner's Hospital Oncology Services. The second of three annual Keys tournaments that raise funds for cystic fibrosis research and treatment, the Robert James Sales Baybone Celebrity Tournament is set for October 10th through the 12th in Key Largo. Targeted, targeted species include permit and bonefish. The Isla Mirada Fall All Tackle Bonefish and Permit Tournament, set for October 13th through the 15th, is a three-day challenge that attracts energized newcomers to face seasoned veterans. Ooh la la. And now, let's hear from the one and only Andy Newman. Andy, we miss you. Back on the phone with you guys after a great Florida Keys show last week. Today we're talking about the 15th annual Take Stock and Children Backcountry Challenge. It's scheduled for September 26th to the 28th in Key Largo. Now anglers will be targeting trout, redfish, and snook, and the fishing can begin as soon as the captain's meeting ends. 
Tournament proceeds benefits the statewide Take Stock and Children's Scholarship Program. It awards college funding opportunities for economically disadvantaged students. For more Take Stock details, check out keylargorotary.org. And of course, for more information on all tournaments and events in the Florida Keys, it's flakeys.com. Now back to you guys in the studio. Why, thank you, Andy. And now we have Captain Mike Holliday, who's gonna tell us the best places to fish from in our region. Go ahead, Mike. Well, well Bree, you know, the most well-known piers in my region are the Juno Beach and Lake Worth Piers. Those are on the ocean, um, and lately they've had a lot of mangrove snapper and mostly oversized snook, and that bite's been at night. There's also some good inshore piers, like that old wooden pier on the Jensen Causeway, and the, the piers at Twin Rivers Park just inside St. Lucie Inlet. Those are really great places to fish flounder around the pilings, you, you know, flipping a finger mullet on a 3 8 ounce jig head or fishing snook at night around the pilings on, on either mullet or uh, menhaden. The jetties are another story. With a fall mullet run kicking into gear like it's been, the mullet are migrating down the beach in big schools, and those schools are really getting bottled up on the jetties, you know, up against that north side of the inlet, uh, pretty much every inlet in my region. Uh, so snook, tarpon, big jacks, jumbo ladyfish, black tip sharks, they're all over those bait schools particularly right at dark and right at first light. Live mullet, swimming plugs, topwater chuggers, and even spoons are all productive on those fish on the beach. Uh, there's also a good flounder bite against the rocks at the spur jetty on the south side of the Fort Pierce Inlet out on that jetty. And I was talking to Eric Gates at Juno Bait and Tackle, and he said there's a good concentration of snook and small tarpon around the south jetty in Jupiter at night. So, uh, you know, a lot of places to go in my region. All right, what do you got for me in shore there, bub? Well, it, you know, the snook bite last week's just sort of been off the chain. A lot of big fish and slop fish in the mix. There's still a good concentration of fish around the inlets and on the beaches, but the majority of snook have moved back into the intercoastal waterway and are feeding on those first schools of, of mullet for the fall mullet run. By far the best action is taking place at night around South Bridge and the Turning Basin and Fort Pierce, the Jensen Causeway, the Stewart Causeway, the Tencent Bridge in Stewart, and then the, you know, the A1A and Lake Worth bridges in Palm Beach County. The docks in the intercoastal waterway are also really good at night. Uh, live mullet are the top baits, and this is also a great time to fish topwater plugs and die dappers on the seawalls right at first light. Or at night, work the upcurrent side of the bridges, throwing like a mag minnow down the shadow line. In the inlet, mullet on a quarter ounce jig head work really well, as does a free line mullet just put up against the rocks. The average snook's going to be 4 to 15 pounds. I got a photo. Gary Rose from Texas caught that over the slot snook. That fish, uh, he pulled out of the mullet schools in the middle of the day, and he did a black and silver colored Rapala skater walk. So, snook bites on in my region. All right, let's go offshore, bub. Well, the wahoo bite off Palm Beach ramped up again over the weekend with that, with that moon. Uh, fish to 45 pounds were caught, mostly by anglers that were specifically targeting wahoo. Uh, with high-speed lures and high-speed trolling. Best bite seems to be from Palm Beach Inlet, south of Boynton Inlet, anywhere from 260 to 400 feet of water. But, uh, you know, I have reports from of Wahoo the last couple days all the way up north to Hope Sound. Majority action starts at dawn and goes on to about 10 a.m. Uh, the guys that are, that are getting them are trolling with wire lines or, you know, 20 to 40-ounce trolling weights, really anything that will get your offering down below the surface. Some of the more productive lures have been up a purple or orange Yosuri Bonita, or a red and black Wahoo Express or Black Bart. And you can also troll Ballyhoo with a red and black Islander lure, or just slow troll, you know, large live blue runners, or even a big mullet right now and have a shot at a fish. Average Wahoo's 20 to 30 pounds, so good Wahoo in the mix. The other thing is, it's sort of been a surprising September for kingfish in the region. They're usually gone by early September, and the fish are spread out all the way from Boynton Beach all the way up to the Vero Cove. The biggest fish are coming off the beach in 25 to 55 feet of water, and that's when the winds are out of the west. When it's not, there's plenty of 12 to 25 pound fish being caught along the drop off Jupiter, also on the sand pile in Stewart, and also in the junk hole off Jensen Beach. And you can target the kings by, you know, slow trolling a live blue runner, a goggle eye, or a Spanish sardine on a stinger rig made with number four wire. <laughs> and if you're looking for those fish on the beaches, you can throw a live mullet in the mix. It was, it's funny, I was talking to this guy, Mark Rogers, who texted me 
He was in Hope Sound, and he caught a 42-pound king off Tex Lake. He was slow trolling a mullet on a circle hook, monofilament leader. He was in eight feet of water on the beach looking for tarpon. So some of those big kings are coming in close to feed on those mullet schools. But for the most part, average king's going to be 10 to 20 pounds in my region. All right, Mike, let's go bass fishing. Give it to me. Man, you know, the water levels are up on Lake Okeechobee. That's letting the bass get back into the grass in areas like the west side of Rita Island and also in the west wall. Those fish are feeding early on minnows and small uh, bluegill fry. So you can pitch small top waters or bass assassins, four inch shads and like a June bug, anything with a chartreuse tail that looks like a bluegill or anything that looks like a shad. Uh, throw it up into the grass and you can crush those school fish that are up to about three pounds. Then again, three boats had over 20 pounds in the inaugural Roland Martin Marine Center tournament over the weekend. The majority of those big fish that were caught in the tournament came pitching black and blue colored one ounce jigs in the heavy reeds that either formed a point or created little pockets in the reeds on observation shoal. Um, you're really looking for just thick reed clumps from what I hear. And uh, there was also some nice fish caught doing that same pattern in, in the Indian Prairie Canal. One last thing I want to mention, the FWC's Trophy Catch Program received its thousandth submission last month. This program, the Trophy Catch Program is simple. You take a picture of a fish over eight pounds that shows the entire bass on the scale and its weight, submit the photo to trophycatchflorida.com and you got a chance to win all kinds of prizes and even including a shot at a new bass boat. So if you get a big bass, you definitely want to submit that. All right, Mike, next week I want a date for when Bree can come up and go fishing with you, okay? We're going to start your report out with the date, okay, bub? Yeah, Mike. I'll be down there. I'll be down there in... Uh, no, no. He wants Herman to come Hill fish with you. you. All right, bub, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the Waterway Cafe Bye, hotspots. Bye, <laughs> waterwaycafe.com. In short, tarpon at night in the mouth of the Fort Pierce Inlet on the outgoing tide, live bait on the 7-0 circle hook, and then offshore, mutton snapper and yellowtail snapper in 65 to 90 feet of water due east of the Juno Pier. Sardines, cigar minnows, and finger mullet. I think he's going to throw me in the water and use me for chum. I just got I him in trouble. Hope, hope, hope <laughs> okay, shot. stay tuned because coming up we have our Coastal Conservation Minute Tip and our last captain from the Southeast region chumming and ready to roll only on the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report. High five. I got you. The oh, yeah. Chevy Florida yeah. Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by the Florida Lottery. Just imagine. Suffix, the world's most hardcore fishing line. Tires Plus, Total Car Care, the IGFA, Conservation Through Education, Get Your Hands Wet, Florida Outdoor Experience, Lumber Rock, Captain Harry's Fishing Supply Company. Introducing Helmaster, Yamaha's first fully integrated digital boat control system. With Helmaster, you can start your outboards with a swipe of a fob and control them with a single lever. Outboard trim and steering friction adjust automatically as you accelerate and decelerate. Adjust engine speed with the touch of a button. The Helmaster joystick provides the means to navigate and dock precisely with confidence and ease. Take control of your next vessel with Helmaster at your command. Guatemala. Startron is a multifunctional fuel additive that uses enzyme technology. Startron cures and prevents ethanol fuel problems. Engines powered by Startron treated fuel start easily and run smoothly with fewer emissions and better fuel economy. Startron restores octane to old substandard fuel. Startron's enzyme formula enhances combustion for a more complete fuel burn. Startron, it's not the engine. It's the fuel. It's Chevy Truck Month. Time when truck guys can depend on great offers on the 2014 North American Truck of the Year. I was born free. Chevy Silverado, from the family of the most dependable, longest-lasting, full-size pickups on the road. 
get $7,000 total value on the Silverado Crew Cab LT All-Star Edition, or trade up to get $8,500. See your local Chevy dealer today. Most anglers only think about oysters when they're out to dinner, but did you know how beneficial oysters are to healthy fish populations? Oysters are filter feeders. They intake food and oxygen by pumping massive amounts of water across their gills. And in fact, while feeding, oysters intake viruses, bacteria, photoplankton, algae, sediment, and chemical contaminants found in the water column. One adult oyster can filter 50 gallons of water in a 24-hour period. Oyster reefs also function as wave breaks for fish habitat. They offer shoreline protection from storms by breaking powerful wave energy before it reaches the water's edge, reducing shoreline erosion. Globally, oysters have declined by 85%, thus becoming the most severely impacted marine habitat on Earth. In order to reduce the decline in Florida, the Department of Environmental Protection and other organizations like CCA participated in oyster reef restoration projects statewide. Go to ccaflorida.org to learn more about how you can get involved and how to protect and restore our marine resources. Thanks. What do you think about that? I thought that was pretty cool, How'd especially you like when you said sediment. sediment. Yeah. That means <laughs> It's such you know. a rickism. Okay, here to close <laughs> us out with a bang is Captain Jimbo Thomas from the Southeast region. Let's hear it, Jimbo. I think I'm the one who ate most of those oysters. Well, how you doing, Rick Free and Outlaw? Well, at oh, one boy. time there were quite a few fish piers <laughs> here in the Southeast region, but over the years most of them have been beat up by hurricanes and tropical storms, so there's only a few of them still operating. We've got the Lake Worth Pier, Deerfield Beach Pier, the Pompano Pier, Anglin's Pier and the newly rebuilt South Beach Pier. And I believe the Pompano and the South Beach Piers are free and the others charge around three to four dollars. Now there can also be some good fishing around the jetties, although you risk your life walking over those rocks, but you can safely fish them from a boat, uh, most of them at least. Now the Boynton Inlet Jetty, it's basically a fishing pier and on the south side of Holliver Inlet, there's a concrete walkway. And the pier and jetty catch lately has been made up of small snappers and jacks. And there's also some Spanish mackerel starting to show up in the north end. But throughout the year, snook, bluefish, pompano, cobia, kingfish, and many other species, they can be caught off those piers and jetties. And they've even caught sailfish off the Lake Work Pier. Uh, I believe that probably on a west wind, you put a kite out there and get your bait out there and catch a sailfish. Sounds good to me. Most of the piers also have a good supply of live bait hanging around, making catching your own bait easy. Do make sure that you bring along plenty of egg sinkers and hooks when fishing around the piers, because there's usually a lot of snags and hangs that like to eat up all your tackle. Now staying inshore, coming off the full moon that we had earlier this week, the permit fishing has been good in, in South Biscayne Bay. Now these permit, they prefer good weather just like us fishermen, so on the days with good visibility and stable weather, stable meaning not having storms throughout the day, that's when these permit have been biting the best. The permit fishing has been good around the Ragged Keys with fish in the 7 to 10 pound range. And then in the Caesars Creek to Angel Fish Creek area, the fish have been a little bigger in the 15 to 20 pound range. You want to fish on corally or hard bottom flats with good tidal flow and fish with silver dollar sized crabs or crab pattern flies. Now I got a picture here. This is Flavio Smidel, I think I said that right, from Brazil. This is one of the permit, one of the, a permit that he caught fishing with Captain Joe Gonzalez earlier this week in South Biscayne Bay. All right, now let's move. go offshore, Jimbo. You got it offshore. We have September full moon wahoo. Now these wahoos are being caught throughout the region, but the Hillsboro, Boynton Inlet areas are usually the full moon wahoo hotspots. The best fishing is going to be in blue water with good north current. The live bait fishermen are finding the wahoo in 160 to 260 feet of water using big goggle eyes and speedos when they can find them. And they're fishing their baits under the kite or drifting them on flat lines. You definitely want to use some wire leader. I like to use an 18 inch piece of number five wire. Now these bigger baits are going to get more bites and it isn't a bad idea to add a stinger hook. Now if you get a bite and the fish misses the hook, try dropping back and letting the bait drift down naturally 
and most of the time the wahoo will come back to finish off what's left of the bait. Now trolling has also been producing wahoos in the same 160 to 260 foot depth. A wireline outfit or a planer with a three and a half to number four drone spoon or pink or blue, a pink or blue and white sea witch with a bonita strip trolled at five to eight knots. That's also a wahoo favorite. My buddy Captain Art Sapp board native sun charters out of Hillsborough Inlet says the bulk of the wahoos caught in his area have been in the 20 to 25 pound range with an occasional larger one mixed in. Now we also have had a fairly steady sailfish bite offshore this week with the fish being caught in 120 to the 300 foot range. Almost all the bites have been coming off of live herrings, goggles, sardines, or pilchards drifted or fished under the kite. And just like the wahoo, the best sail fishing is going to be in blue water with north current. And most of the sails are being caught on baits intended for wahoos or it could be that most of the wahoos are being caught on baits intended for sails. But either way, you want to use a piece of wire leader to avoid any cutoff, and the sails will still bite the baits with the wire leaders. Now in the Miami area, we've been getting two to four sail bites per day, and in the, in the north end, it's been anywhere from three to six bites a day on average. Hi, good job, Coralie Captain. I never heard of that word before, but we'll talk <laughs> about that next week, I'm sure. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the hot spots from the Captain Harry Southeast region. Look for the permit cruising the outside flats from Soldier's Key south to Angelfish Creek and cast a crab pattern flies or a live crab to them. And then offshore, live bait or troll in 120 to 300 foot range for Wahoo, Sailfish, and Kings. I have a message for Jimbo from Harry. You're the outlaw, says Harry. Okay. Okay. Well, with only two more shows left in our oh. season, stick around to hear what species we'll be talking about next week. You think or we ought to extend the season? Yes, right here on the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Award. Okay. <laughs> it's Chevy Truck Month, time when truck guys can depend on great offers on the 2014 North American Truck of the Year. I was born free. Chevy Silverado from the family of the most dependable, longest-lasting, full-size pickups on the road. Get $7,000 total value on the Silverado Crew Cab LT All-Star Edition, or trade up to get $8,500. See your local Chevy dealer today. It's 200 streamlined horsepower of Yamaha Forward Thinking. The all-new F200 inline four-stroke. Whether you're an offshore angler, pontoon cruiser, bay boater, or walleye hunter, the responsive and fuel-efficient F200 combines amazing power and versatility in one incredibly compact and lightweight package. The all-new F200. Legendary Yamaha reliability and the freedom of forward thinking. It's been said that a bad day of fishing is better than a good day at the office. But down here in the Florida Keys, we have to disagree. Because with over 200 of the world's best charter boat captains and guides, there's no such thing as a bad day of fishing. The Florida Keys and Key West. Jackpot! 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 Get ready for the Jackpot family of scratch-off games from the Florida Lottery. With a top prize of $2 million, jackpots will happen. Will you be ready for yours? I got... I got... I got the Florida Lottery. Just imagine. Thanks for tuning in to the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and Twitter to keep up with our captains, contests, and appearances. 
You never have to miss a show. You can find full episodes of the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report right on your YouTube channel. And make sure to check out our website for fishing reports in your region. Visit www.chevyfloridainsiderfishingreport.com for everything you need to know to stay hooked up. Next week on the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report, we are talking redfish. So make sure to tune in to Sun Sports every Thursday. Plus, you can catch repeats of the Chevy Florida Insider Fishing Report on Fridays and Saturdays. Make sure to check your local listings for times. Hey, guys. Harry, I'm really impressed with these pliers. <laughs> they're they're Guess sweet, Guess how aren't impressed they? I am. I know you want to steal them. I'm not stealing them. I'll call you tomorrow with my credit card. I'd like to okay. purchase them, yes. please. They are sweet. They are awesome. Oh, no doubt about it. They are beautiful. And all the girls want bracelets. Oh, yeah, I'm no going to steal this Hooked one up jewelry. We'll right now. set up all the girls with whatever they want. Can hey, I have, can I thank you so much you for can. coming back. Hey, it's great to be back. Yeah, it's I good love to being see back you, Harry. You. you did it's a good awesome. job as Thanks, always. Rick. Have fun you know, in your tournament this past weekend. We're going to do it. Come in there. Tires Plus. Red Tournament. Thursday night in Bradyton. Bye. Bye, guys.